Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy Liang, and today I don't have any presentation. So for people who's visual, you only got me. <laughs> so I'll just talk from my heart, and I know that um, Alan gave me a task, watch your clock, must be within 15 minutes, my speech. <laughs> so um, I'm originally, who am I? So I'm originally from Beijing, China. 15 years ago, I migrated to New Zealand as a, a skilled migrant, simply for more options in life. My Kiwi manager, who encouraged me to apply for residence, said to me, Lucy, I know you like traveling. Having a New Zealand passport means you don't need a visa to many countries. So I trusted him and packed my bag for an adventure in life. I remember I landed in Wellington in the middle of winter. I got homesick immediately and got a little bit depressed. The first three months was really hard for me because I have no family, no friends, just work colleagues I got to know recently. So where should I go for socials during the weekend? So one Saturday, I went to the Wellington Central Library and applied for my library card. And I realized there were friendly people out there, and my choice to migrate to New Zealand was right. So I phoned my <laughs> colleague, um, Jill, from UK, who's also migrated to New Zealand, to celebrate my new library card at the library cafe. Since then, nearly every single weekend, we met at the library cafe to say cheers to each other with a cup of tea and coffee to feeling a little bit social. <laughs> I feel much relaxed and content afterwards. Library for me is almost like second large family home. So if you ask migrants um, in New Zealand where they encountered their first positive experience in New Zealand, they will probably say library. So thank you for all the librarians who make the migrants' life much easier. <laughs> So today, I'm actually um, representing the Office of Ethnic Communities. So um, you may wonder, so what's your definition of ethnic communities? I, I will skip the official part. <laughs> so pretty much, apart from Maori, Pacific, and migrants from UK and North America, we look after all the populations in New Zealand, including Middle Eastern, Latin American, Asian, African, East European, etc. They sometimes call us a little UN. <laughs> so um, what is the purpose of our job? OK, so we work to promote the benefit of ethnic diversity in New Zealand. So the office promotes full participation in our diverse communities to contribute to the social, cultural, and economic benefit for all New Zealanders. And you may ask me, so what do you do then? <laughs> we have a defined our roles into three words. We inspire, influence, and include. So inspire. We inspire our ethnic communities to develop their leadership in the long-term integration and social cohesion area. Influence. We influence policy and other institutions in the areas related to ethnic diversity issues. Include. We include all ethnic communities in the key issues about our society. Basically, the office programs are determined by our minister, Home Paseta Samlutianga's priorities. So we work in the three uh, focus areas at the moment. Number one, leadership and community relations. Number two, business, education, and innovation. Number three, language, culture, and identity. So when I was asked to come in today to do the reflection on the topic, I have three reflections, and I'll try to use some real examples to illustrate my points. The number one reflection is, remove language barriers and contribute to a sense of belonging. One example I could think about was the electoral office approached us just before the last general election. We met with their communication manager and helped them develop the marketing strategy. We indicated that the language barrier could be a main reason to stop people to vote. So they translated the voting um, documents into the top five languages used by Language Line, which is a telephone interpreting service. And now I see they have the fact sheets on their website translated into 27 languages. And the current fear, as you probably know, we're going to vote for New Zealand flag. And you can see those New Zealand flag information also on their website into many languages. 
So no matter what interactions you have with ethnic communities, I really want you to think about remove the language barriers first. Libraries are considered traditionally a safe place which helped migrants and refugees to develop their sense of belonging. It is a vital source of information and knowledge, and therefore libraries play an important role in settlement education. I have heard a good story um, from Plunkett, actually, that the free wriggle and rhyme baby singing session have helped many ethnic moms to get out of their postnatal depression and develop a sense of belonging. So thank you, librarians, to create this such a great program. My number two reflection is understand the ethnic community's needs before engagement and help with social cohesion. So um, each time I come to Wellington, you're bound to um, meet with some policy people, so I probably know some of you sitting here. You may hear about these um, documents called Ethnicity Matters, which is a um, policy development guideline. It is designed to help agencies to plan, evaluate the policy and uh, services that are appropriate to ethnic communities. I would like you to know that ethnic communities may have different perceptions towards government or government agencies, and they may have a certain ways of preferred engagement. For example, they may prefer face-to-face -face interactions or engagement rather than online survey or hard copy printout for key issues such as institutional review, community development strategy, or local council's long-term plan. Some of the ethnic communities may perceive government as an authority to dictate citizens' life based on their home experiences, and they are afraid to say anything about government policy based on their perceptions. Sometimes, because they don't trust the way of approach, and they may choose not to engage or avoid participation. So what can we do? Basically, um, I suggest using um, ethnic media channels could be very good to distribute information and call for engagement. One successful example was um, some years ago when New Zealand changed the driving rules at giveaway or intercessions. The ethnic media played a very important role to educate ethnic communities about the change. The end result was that there were less road incidents happened, according to police. So if you need a list of ethnic media contacts in New Zealand, you can simply mm -hmm. click on Contact Us on the Office of Ethnic Communities website, and you can get the full list at any time. So if you ask me, what can libraries can actually practically help with ethnic communities? I will say, act as an enabler. So you could be a place to facilitate inter-community leadership development. You could connect Maori with ethnic communities. You may want to host a, an interface dialogue between different religions, or deliver a seminar to invite ethnic community leaders to have a courageous conversation about topics related to our society, because libraries are considered as a central place. My number three reflection is shaping the future of a multicultural and harmonious world. What can libraries help in this area? Well, some of you have already done well by display or exit um, some of the languages and cultures at your local libraries. But maybe think about your design or when you renovate or build a new library. For example, uh, if you build a new library in a Muslim population high identity area, such as Morosco in Auckland, you may want to put in a prayers room. Apart from physical channels, um, I think digital um, channels becoming more important to engage with ethnic young people. One example I want to demonstrate was the Office Ethnic Youth Leadership Program. The program was developed based on a number of researches showing that there were very few ethnic people in senior management positions within New Zealand public sector. We started piloting in Auckland in 2012, and we want to give um, young ethnic leaders aged between 18 and 25 a taste of working for government and inspire them 
to become future senior leaders within public sector because we don't want all the ethnic young people to study commerce, law, accounting, to start in the career in private sector. And we, this, this program started with the web first strategy and they used the digital and um, social uh, media channel to engage participants and help them to exchange ideas, services, and build network. The end result was that all participants were fully engaged and they even together produced a video, um, video to participant in the UN competition of documenting what you do on the 12th of December 2012. So one of the showcase of the program was that one of the graduates recently joined our office as a policy analyst. His name is Gulet Meyer. He's a graduate from AUT, coming from Somali refugee background. So it's good to see some of our programs have actually changed people's life. In conclusion, I think the world is changing as our diversities are becoming more diverse. So it represents both opportunities and challenges. I was recently involved in the conversation of super diversity, you know, because Auckland now become the second super diverse city in the world, apart from Toronto, I believe, overtaking London and Sydney. So, you know, all of us have a role to play to make sure that we're encouraging full participation in our diverse communities. So for all of us sitting here today, I would like you to, to think about how we individually can contribute to encourage participation in our diverse communities via different channels. I have a question for you. Does your organization has a future focus strategy? Because if you do, I believe it will benefit a lot in your sector and your communities. Thank you very much. <laughs>